<laughs> oh, geez. Well, everyone, thanks for joining me on the stream. One of one of my New Year's resolutions for this year is to start doing streams every weekend so that I can chat with you guys and talk with you guys and help you guys and, you know, help you get those gains. So let's, uh, is mine the only one with the loading icon? I hope so. Oh, really, Shadow? You've been trying that out? So the the, the single arm uh, push down, you've been trying that? It's pretty intense, right? Hold on, I'm gonna... I'm gonna adjust my camera real quick. It's like to to the left of me, and it's it's throwing me off. One second. I have so much junk in front of me right now. It's ridiculous. There we go. You guys are getting an aerial view of my room, my man cave. Oh, too many camera stands. There we go. Technical difficulties. Boom. Now we got the straight on view. This is what I like. Much better. Uh, more to here. Boom. And now you guys can't see my face. There we go. That's better, right? <laughs> hey, what's up, Brian Gates? Um, well, I'm in, I'm on the third floor of my house, so there's no, there's no door up here. So that's why I have a curtain in front of that window. And it's actually a smaller window, but I wanted it to match the curtains I have on this side of my room. So I just made them all long curtains. Hey, what's up everyone from YouTube coming in. All right, guys. So the way I want this to work is I want to spend some time answering your questions, um, and interacting with you. And then hopefully bring some of you guys on stage. Um, but I do have a few things, so I will be doing a giveaway for this, uh, and I'll explode. Uh, it's a pre-workout. I know I'm all, it's the, and I'll explode XE Edge, really intense pre-workout. And I do want to say, for those of you guys who were here on the last show, we did a giveaway and Greg won. And like, he's emailed me a few different times, but never, <laughs> Never responds when I email him back. So if you guys see Greg go on the show today, um, we need to make sure that he knows that he's not responding to my emails. I've just been asking him for his address now for like two months so I can send him his prize. <laughs> and he even emailed my customer service. He's like, hey, I don't know like what's going on. I want to get my prize. So I emailed him back from customer service and I still didn't hear from him. And I'm like, I'm trying so hard to send you this pre-workout. Like we we were all crossing our fingers. Remember, remember we had like 50 people in the giveaway, and Greg's like, I really, really want to win. So we're all like, Greg, 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 Greg. And then he randomly won. It was hilarious. But he never got his stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Shadow. I think it just went to his his spam folder and then you know just got lost there. So if he comes back, we're gonna have to get him back. What's your favorite multivitamin? Honestly, guys, any any multivitamin you get is going to be fine. I just get a, a regular one from Vitamin Shop, honestly. Um, the most important thing is making sure you're eating um, healthy enough food, so your fruits, your vegetables, all that stuff, and make sure you're getting as many of the vitamins as possible from regular food. Like, you can't, you can't just eat crap all day and then think you're going to take a multivitamin, and then all of a sudden your gains are like, over 9,000. It's not going to work. Um, and speaking of over 9,000, let me see. If your audio is cracking, guys, you need to come to the Gravy platform. The link is in the info section below. Here we go. I want to show you guys something. So Andrew Skidmore actually did something for me. He made me some, some uh, photos of Vegeta, which I'm going to be putting together soon. I just wanted to share those. Andrew, thanks so much for sending these to me, bro. These came out sick. I think my favorite one is the Majin v Vegeta one. I like how you colored the eyebrows in to make them look a little more epic. <laughs> uh, but right here, this is my favorite one, Majin Vegeta. That just came out so good. Andrew did an amazing job. just want to say 
Special thanks to you, Andrew. We got Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta here. And then we got Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta here. The red on the eyes definitely looks pretty cool. So, man. And then we got the new Super Saiyan God Vegeta right there. So now I get the whole set. Just want to say thank you very much to you, Andrew. Came out great. Can't ha wait to have you up here. And we'll get your program filmed real soon. You gained 25 pounds in 10 days, Bobby2000? What were you doing, man? <laughs> oh, man. Here's a really good question. Um, and I have been talking about this a lot lately. So Beast Hunter says, how many sets per week for biceps? So, and you guys are going to see this as well with the Cheat and Recover program. And I'm actually going to make a, I'm making a video about this um, next week. I'm talking about sets and reps in general. And basically what's happening, guys, is, and I'm even making program, I, I mean, I do Skype consultations. And I just recently just got consultation and I, I gave this guy a program and he's doing push pull legs three times a week. And he's very concerned that he's not, he's not doing like five exercises for biceps in a day like he's used to doing. And, you know, I explained like, listen, you know, you don't need five exercises for biceps. If anything, you need maybe two exercises for biceps. And sometimes maybe even two is too much, especially on a push pull legs program where you're doing a lot of heavy back work. And it doesn't necessarily come down to how many sets you do per exercise or, or how many exercises you do per muscle group. It has to do with the volume. And a lot of times you guys will go to the gym, no matter what body pot you're doing, and you will literally do like three sets per exercise and then move on and try to hit as many exercises as possible. But what's happening is by the time you guys get to that third set, that's when you really start actually feeling the muscle damage happening. You start to feel the pump. You start to feel good. Your muscles are now in sync with the exercise that you're doing. And then as soon as you start to actually get to a point to where you're going to be able to maximize an exercise for results, because you have in your mind that you're only doing three sets, you stop and move to the next exercise. And that is the worst thing that you can be doing. You should be doing an exercise until you can't do it anymore. Like focus on volume on exercises that give you the most bang for your buck. And that's kind of like a lot of you guys, you know, you're trying to do, you're trying to do bodybuilding workouts, like you're doing exercises that target like specific heads of the bicep, you know, if your biceps are small in general, you don't need to do exercises that target the outside head or the inside head, like you're not on stage doing this, and then you notice one bicep is smaller than the other, and it's affecting you competing, you just want to get overall as big as you can on every muscle group, right? So, I mean, I'm going to make a video talking more in depth about that. But basically, don't, don't mentally hold yourselves back because of sets and reps. Hit heavy compound exercises as hot as you can, as you can for as much volume as you can. And that's where you're going to see the most muscle growth. Here we go. Wix Lax. Uh, if you haven't been gaining any fat during your bulk, then you suddenly gain a little fat. Should you cut the calories back a tiny bit? My weekly surplus is 1,500 calories. Oh, wow. Yeah, Wix. Well, there's two answers to this question. Um, if you've, if in, Wix, what's your, what is your total calories right now? Because that's going to play a huge part of this because, you know, you're saying your surplus is 1,500 calories. That means you need to be eating at least probably 4,500 to 5,000 a day, depending on the average person, I would say. So, if it's a it's a if it's a 1500 calorie surplus from what you were eating before and what you're eating before wasn't enough calories then that could be part of the problem too what you guys are going to notice when you start bulking and if you were if you were under eating for a long time and you start eating more you might gain bits of body fat the first couple of weeks this is what actually happened to me i talked about this a little while ago where i just said screw it and i just started stuffing my face with as much food as i could um, I think that I was even under eating a bit because I was trying to stay, you know, a certain level of body fat percentage, which just isn't, it's not the right thing to do. And after two weeks of stuffing my face, I put a little bit of body fat on, but then after those two weeks, it's like my, my body reset itself and it started to realize that it's getting more food. So it was learning to digest more food at once. It was burning more calories because it was getting more food at once. And 
I kind of just had this transformation of where my muscles started getting fuller and bigger and I started looking better. I mean, you guys have commented on my videos over the past few months now that I look better. I look thicker, you know, even look a little more ripped than I was before, especially in the abdominal area. And it's actually because I've, I'm eating more food, you know, but there was like a two, maybe three week period where it kind of felt like I was putting on body fat. I was still feeling really good, but it felt like I was putting on body fat. But then after those two to three weeks, it's like my body just reset because the workouts were so intense. And then it just, it just started changing for the better. So you can even be someone like me who's been working out for like 18 years and still it's a, it's, it's not necessarily a knowledge thing. Like I know obviously what to do. It's a, it's a mental game. It's you just you hold yourself back because you're afraid of getting fat or you're afraid of losing your abs or you know whatever whatever it might be. And it's a mental struggle we all deal with. So if you're getting a little fat, I'd let it go. I would test it out for like at least you know a month, you know, and see if after that third week you start to change and, and feeling better. If you don't, then I would dial the calories back. Michael Boats, been watching World Strongman 2017. Most of the guys are massive, but none of them seem to have any six packs. Is that because they're concentrating more on strength training? Yeah, and, and that's something you guys really need to understand too, especially going into 2018 with your goals. You know, there's training for specific purposes. When you're doing Strongman, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to do ab crunches in order to get abs. And that's just such bullshit. Like, it, it really is. And it's because people don't understand the difference between core and abs, okay? Your core is like this whole area, front to back, and even some internal muscles that you can't see, like your transverse abdominis. That is your core. And that will get strong as hell doing heavy compound lifting, not necessarily targeting your abs, all right? Um, and then also... Everybody has abs, okay? Just like everybody has a chest, everybody has biceps, everybody has glutes, like everybody has abs. They are there and they will become more visible with less body fat. That's why skinny dudes can go like this and have a ripped bicep, but it can still only be like eight inches big, right? It, it might be ripped, but it won't be big. Now, if you want that bicep to be big, what do you have to do? You have to train it. You have to get extension and flexion and get that muscle to rip and tear and grow. Same thing with abs. Strong men aren't going to go to the gym and do ab exercises because it's a waste of time for them. They're not, they're not going on stage or going to the beach trying to flex their abs and pick up chicks. They want to lift as heavy as possible. And in most cases, having more body fat is usually helpful for, for them. I mean, look at these guys' bodies when you watch strong men. They're absolutely massive. And that's where all these like these things trickle down from all these misconceptions because you got people on both ends saying things that aren't true. But if you want abs, if you want your abs to look better, like I said, everybody has abs. If you lose body fat, you have abs. But if you want your abs to look better and thicker and blockier, then you have to train them so that they get bigger and thicker and blockier. Your abs are not going to grow unless you get extension and flexion and that's where the ab crunch comes in so i hope that helps <laughs> take a sip of my drink real quick so this has like 350 milligrams of caffeine so i'm going to be working out after this uh this show <laughs> all right and i just want to say thank you all you guys for for checking out the show um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the link and come to the gravy platform so you can participate in the giveaway of my NO Explode XE. Bam, right there. It's a pre-workout in case you guys didn't know. What is this? Uh, C variable Rio. IO Scott, real quick. If I want to bloat max instead of focusing on aesthetics. Um, hold on. I lost your question. It disappeared. Uh, can you repost that question? I think I lost it. Uh, should I bulk or cut at 15 years old? You should, well, unless you're obesely overweight, you should be doing muscle building workouts and focusing on eating at 15 years old. There's a lot of young guys here. Even if you're 18, all right, 
you're at a point in your life where your body is going to grow. And I wish I had this advice because who knows, I could have been six feet tall. Um, and the reason why I'm saying I could have been six feet tall is because my uncle Tim is like six, two, and my three younger brothers are all six, two, six, three. Okay. Granted, they don't work out and they're all pencil thin, but because I worked out so much, I did sports so much my entire life. I don't think I ate enough food for my body to keep up with all the repairing it had to do and the growing it had to do during my teenage years. I think it could have been a bit taller. Um, but I mean, I definitely had the genetics in my family for it. So maybe I stuck in my own growth a bit because I wasn't eating enough food. So if you're 15 years old, 16, 17, 18, eat your face off. Worry about getting super shredded when you're like 20, 21. But, you know, you can also still get pretty damn shredded and ripped eating a lot of food because your body's going to burn those calories. It's all about doing the right program. Jeez, man, there's lots of questions. This is great. I'll be on the stream for about an hour. Let's see. Does black coffee harm stomach lining? Uh, not that I'm aware of. It hasn't harmed my lining. I feel pretty good. <laughs> I feel like you guys are having some um, conversations in here that I'm not seeing. This is kind of funny. Uh, thanks, Logan One. Really mean. I really appreciate that, guys. And hey, you know, just so you guys know, there is a ask a question and contribute button on the gravy platform. So if you're enjoying the content and you want to support me, you know, by all means, hit that contribute button. And if you have a specific question you want me to see, click on ask a question. You can ask it right there. 100 push-ups daily. What results can I get? I mean, you'll you'll definitely get some results, but you're going to plateau pretty quick just doing push-ups at home. Uh, unless you start doing like creative things like plyo push-ups or suspended push-ups or maybe pick up a, a pair of push-up bars so that you can get more of a range of motion out of your push-ups. But just doing body weight push-ups a day, I mean, yeah, the muscles will get leaner and stronger. And if you have zero chest muscles, they will grow a bit as well as your shoulders and triceps. Um, but you only can do so much working out at home in terms of bodybuilding. So it's a good place to start, though. That's where I started. My first piece of equipment I ever bought, well, my dad got it for me. I was like eight, was a pair of push-up bars. And I would I would ha go hammering on those push-up bars every day. Like I was, I was like just going nuts with it, you know? I kind of wish I could be eight years old again and, and I was learning about fitness for the first time. You know, that excitement of of looking like the comic book characters that I, that I would read about every single day you know, to look like a, an X-Men or Superman or whatever. That was my motivation, you know, open up a comic book. I'm like, yeah, let's go do some push-ups. I'm going to get huge. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know who George Lehman is, Combat Wombat. Maybe you can, um, you can uh, let me know. Barbell and weights with no rack, no bench, enough to get strong. Um, I mean, Roman, we can figure something out. If you want to, you can go to my website, musculostrength.com, and you can post in my forum section, and we can try to figure out a workout for you. I can't do that, obviously, here right now. I don't have the time, but, I mean, there, there's always possibilities. Juan Martin Garan. Hey, Scott, pre- or post-workout for creatine? Um, so it doesn't matter. And you guys, I've talked about creatine a lot. Creatine is stored in your skeletal muscle tissue, and it's basically stored there until you need it, which is during your workout. But as long as you're taking like five grams a day every single day, it's going to be sat. Your body's going to be saturated with creatine, and it won't matter when you take it, as long as you take it daily, it will do its job. And its job is not building muscle. Its job is energy production. All right, it's a whole process. Um, where ADP gets gets resynthesized back to ATP. I won't get into it, but believe me when I say that's all you need is like five grams a day, maybe eight to 10 grams if you're absolutely massive. And as long as you're taking it every single day, it'll get stored in your skeletal muscle tissue and you're good to go. This is great. So many guys from YouTube are popping in. Mm-hmm. I'm going to um, real quick. Boom. Here we go. Vegans could put muscle like athletes or not, please. 
I need to know. I mean, of course you can. As, lo as long as you're eating enough food, getting enough protein, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to. Uh, if you need more help with your vegan diet, my meal plan program on my website, musculostrength.com, does accommodate if you are vegan. So go to my site and check out the meal planner there. Do you think you can make – here's Reclaim TV. Do you think you can make the same gains when working out at home as when working at the gym as a beginner? As a beginner, 100%. As long as you've got, you know, a few weights available to you, you know, maybe like a standard barbell bench press. And then, I mean, because even, even with a standard barbell bench press and some light dumbbells, maybe your dumbbells go up to like 50s or 60s at home. You know, maybe like for a home gym, I would try to get like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then after 30, I would go 40, 50, 60. That should be enough weight for you. But I mean, even with squatting, you know, or deadlifting, you can still do bot, uh, dumbbell squats and deadlifts where you hold the dumbbells by your side to get a good workout in. Again, it all comes down to volume when you're trying to build muscle and how much you're eating. There will be a point where you will have to go to the gym, but you can still push yourself pretty damn hard at home, even with not a lot of equipment available to you. You just obviously have to know what to do to order to, in order to do that. Whole lot of trollish biz. Can I inject synthol into the penis? You can, but only directly in the tip. Um, let's see. Hey, Abby Magic. Love from India. Thanks, man. Means a lot. Uh, Grag28. Is it smart to squat heavy if I have extremely tight hip flexors? Um, probably not. But you know what you should be doing? Um, and a lot of people get this, hey, what's up, Cobra? And Lendy, I don't know what you're training every day for your legs. Maybe give me some more information. Um, so hold on. I forgot the question because I was reading too many things. <laughs> um, is it smart to squat heavy? Okay. So a lot of people get this wrong when it comes to stretching. A lot of people stretch before they work out. And then maybe they do a few warm-up sets, and then they just stop stretching, and they just work out. If you have tight hip flexors, believe it or not, the best time for you to stretch your hip flexors is in between every single set. That will help you loosen up a lot. And what I would recommend that you do is also foam roll the outside of your hips as well. Whenever I squat or I deadlift, I always have my foam roller with me. And in between every single set, I'm foam rolling the crap out of my legs. I'll do my quad. I'll do my hamstrings. I'll do my hip flexors. I'll do up and down the sides of my hip. And because you're doing that in between your sets, you're actually pushing blood out and letting new blood come into the area. And because the muscles are getting warmed up, they're actually going to be more pliable for you to kind of stretch them out and, and loosen them up so they're not as tight. And you might even be able to lift more weight doing that too because you're going to feel better. I mean, that's what was happening to me. I was going through a point where my hips were super tight and I just started foam rolling in between. Or if you guys front squat, right? Believe it or not, if you, when you're front squatting, if your, wrist gets, if your wrist hurts, it's not because you have bad flexibility in your wrist. You see people in the gym all the time. They're like pushing their hands together trying to get their wrist not to hurt. It's your lats. Your lats are so tight that they're pulling your elbows down. And when your elbow gets pulled down and the bar is right here, that's why you get that wrist pain. I guarantee you, if you foam roll your lats in between every single set when front squatting, your front squat's going to go up because you're going to be able to hold the bar comfortably. Hold on. Who's calling me? Oh. Um. Let me see. Joshua Duran. Well, I actually posted a video, Joshua, um, on how to get gain two inches on your biceps like two weeks ago, maybe three. Well, no, actually, it's been longer than that. But go to my YouTube channel and just go through my videos over the last month, and you will see a bicep video there. It's an exercise that is guaranteed to put inches on your biceps as long as you do it right and you overload properly. So make sure you check it out. Andrew, stick to the basics and work back to 100%. Lifted safe 01. 
How many exercises for each muscle group for intermediate lifters? Answer quick. Well, less is more, all right? I would say for bigger muscle groups, two to three exercises is all you need. And keep the sets high, like five, six, seven, eight sets per exercise. Keep the volume high. And for smaller muscle groups like shoulders or biceps and triceps, I would do one to two exercises because if you're smart and you pair your muscle groups up properly, for example, if you're training back, train biceps after back because your biceps are already pre-fatigued and any exercise you do is going to be more effective because you're going to have to work harder with pre-fatigued biceps. So it all comes down to programming and knowing your body and also knowing which exercises have the most impact. $2 from Christian. Did I get a contribution? Did I miss it? Click stats. Uh, hold on one second, guys. Oh, geez. So somebody asked a question. So I do have an ask a question option. And if you do ask a question, it's a blue, it's a blue button. If you're watching on YouTube, you can't see ask a question or contribute. Come to the gravy platform. It's free to use. Um, but if you ask a question, I can see it directly. So um Hides, Hides Rocks asked, any suggestions for wrist pain after bench pressing? So I hope you're still here. That was like 17 minutes ago. Um, so basically if you're getting a lot of wrist pain while benching, it could be for a few different reasons. It could be number one, cause you're benching like, like this, instead of keeping your wrist straight or number two, the, the bones and your, your body in general, isn't used to maybe the heavier weight that you're lifting if you are lifting heavy. So there's two suggestions. The, the first suggestion, the easiest suggestion is pay attention to what you're doing and make sure if your wrist is like this, that it's like that. OK, because if it's like that, if it's bent like this, all that weight is pushing on the joint. If it goes like this, the weight, it's like the energy's traveling straight down. It's not resting on your wrist. Second suggestion is you can pick up a pair of wrist wraps and they're relatively inexpensive. I actually have links to wrist wraps on my website, musculostrength.com. I work with a company called Iron Bull Strength. I get discounts through them. Uh, it's, it's all on my website in the shop area. You'll see it. But putting some wrist wraps on will help keep your wrist straight and help alleviate some pressure. However, I would only use them when it starts to hurt. Try try to push through the pain as much as possible. And then once you can't stand it anymore, if it starts to really bother you, then use the wrist wraps because you want obviously that area to get stronger. So you don't need the wrist wraps if you're not lifting crazy heavy, but you still have pain. But at the same time, you don't want to make the pain worse. So lift with it as soon as it starts to hurt, then put the wrist wrap on. Ah, you're very welcome. And thank you so much for the contribution. The more, you know, I like doing these live streams. I'll tell you right now, the more questions you ask, the what I'm seeing here, the easier this is for me. I love it. Hey, Scott. Ryan Mario one. Hey Scott, should I do heavy compound movement at the beginning or end of workout? So let's say I'm doing a chest workout. Should I do a dumbbell bench press at the beginning or end my chest workout? Okay. So so Ryan, that's a really good question. So anytime you're lifting, you always want to do the heaviest, most effective movements first. And it's for a very simple reason. In order to maximize those movements, you need to have as, as much energy as possible in order to maximize them. So if you were to do like a compound chest press at the end of your workout, if we think about the, the technique of overloading your chest, you're not going to be able to overload it with as much weight as you could if you did the exercise first. So if you want to take advantage of overloading and that stretch flex, the stretch flex overload, which you were doing before, still do those compound movements first. With Montana say, oh, Montana's here. Yeah, Saki, you saw him too. I'm doing good, man. Um, I don't know what his bursting bagel, I don't know what his reverse pyramid training is. I mean, 
at the end of the day, if you're trying to build muscle, you want to go, you want to overload and go for volume. And I recommend my cheat and recover program, which will be out probably by June, January 15th, pretty much done editing it right now. It's a lot of footage. Um, but yeah, you, you want to see not muscle building. It comes down to overloading and volume. What is this? Mihail Mihailov. How many exercises do you recommend to have in a full body routine for an intermediate lifter? I'd say at least one to two per muscle group and make sure that they're compound movements that involve as much muscle as possible. So for example, I would make sure you have the basic compound movements like deadlift squat and bench to hit as much as possible. And then you can fine tune the other exercises for individual body parts you want to hit the most. Hey, thanks, James Hudson. Amos Wong, should you abstain from sex if you are trying to gain mass? I would say no. I mean, <laughs> in terms, I always tell my wife this because we've had, we've had people ask this question before. I'm like, you know, if you want your body to produce more testosterone, then maybe you need to recharge it more by, you know, being intimate with your loved ones. <laughs> That's how I go on it. Hey, what's up, Adya? Adya from India. Adi, Adya from India. What's up, man? <laughs> that rhymes. Uh, okay, forward focus. Wanted to ask about workaround for lat raises that works the same muscle group. Uh, recovering from a pinched nerve in the neck, so can't lift one arm to the side without pain. Oh man. Um. You might you better off sticking to maybe bent over exercises. If you want to really hit your lats, do a bent over row, but use an underhand grip. Don't do overhand. Use underhand. That's going to hit your lats extremely hard. Okay. Your channel is mainly for a beginner. What? My channel is definitely not mainly for beginners, bro. Not at all. <laughs> no one's ever told me that I look like Justin Timberlake, Tyler. <laughs> this is a good question. Beast and Eminent, why does my forearm hurt when doing dumbbell curls? I used to have the same pain, and I would get it the most when I was doing like a preacher curl machine, and my elbows were locked in place, and I would come down like this. And as soon as I would get about halfway, I'd get pain right here. And what I basically attributed that pain to, was just just if you think about where the pressure's lying, oh hyper fierce. I'll get to your question in one second. If you think about where the question is lying, it's like pretty much gonna be in the middle of your forearm. So I attributed the pain to just the bones not being strong enough to handle that weight yet, and they just need to get stronger. And a quick a quick tip for you guys, you know, just because you're taking calcium pills doesn't mean that your bones are getting stronger. Or just because you're getting a lot of vitamin C, I mean. Um, calcium doesn't mean that your bones are getting stronger. The way your bones actually get stronger is through placing stress on them. Um, that's why a lot of older people who don't work out, they can take all the calcium in the world, but their bones still get brittle because they don't do anything. They don't do any, any sort of physical activity to place stress on the bones because your bones only release. It's, it's this process called osteoblast and osteoclast. We won't get into it. But for your bones to release and then take in new calcium, stress has to be placed on them. So even though you might have some pain in your forearm right now, if you keep pushing through it, it will go away. And it certainly did for me. And if we apply the concepts of how calcium works in your body, it does make sense. You guys are so funny in this comment section. Uh, MTI the second, the keto diet, I'd stay away from it. I do not agree with it. I will be making a video about it. It's just not good for long term. And I'll, I'll, I want to do a whole video about that. So I'm not going to get into it here. But basically, you know, yeah, you'll lose weight, but you're also going to feel pretty, pretty thin and out of energy. Like the average person shouldn't be doing this diet. Here, so hyper fierce. I'm 28, 5'11, 180 pounds. 
15, 18% body fat and, and have just a tiny bit of fat on my belly, cut or bulk? That's a really good question, Hyperfierce. And I kind of touched on this a little earlier. So you being 5'11 at 180 pounds, I'm 5'10 at 185, all right? You have plenty of room to grow where you can you can pack on some muscle. For you at, at around 15, 18% body fat, that's a really good place to be in order to build muscle. If you were to work out and do like a really heavy, like push pull leg split uh, or my cheat and recover program when I launch it in uh, a week from now, that would really help you get to the point to where you're packing on some muscle as long as that calorie surplus is like at least 500 over what your maintenance calories are. Because for you to cut at that weight, like – if you were if you were 180 pounds and you cut, you might get down to like 165, and 165 at 511 is really thin, and I don't think you want that. I would definitely focus on a bulk, but I would do a clean bulk, and I would just monitor your progress. And the only other thing I would add is maybe three days a week, do like 15 to 20 minutes of hit cardio. So hit cardio is obviously um, high intensity interval training where you're doing one minute you know, fast jog, one minute sprint, one minute fast jog, one minute sprint. If you were to incorporate that two to three days a week, along with a good push pull legs program, I bet you'll build a lot of muscle and you'll still be quite lean. And then once you get to the point to where you're as big as you want to be, then just get cut up. Yo, I don't have any questions because of your vids. Well, that's good. <laughs> uh, how much does your cheat and, program, cheat and recover program cost? So basically the way my website works is, and right now I do one month free on my website, uh, but that's going to be changing in February, February to one week. So if you want to take advantage of one month free, go to muscularstrength.com right now. The promo code is on the join page. So it's right there. You know exactly what to do. But my website's only $8 a month. It's $7.99. And with that, you get access to my custom meal plan app. Oh, my my official app is launching this month too. I'm very excited about it. Um, but, but you not only get access to Cheat and Recover, which comes with videos, photos, PDF downloads, Excel calendar, and Excel spreadsheet to track your workouts. You get access to every single program on my website. And that's how the site's going to stay. The price point is always going to be low. But as I add more content to the site, and it's always good content, and it's always very, very organized content, okay? And I'm also incorporating programs from other people. For example, if you guys go to my site right now, I have three other YouTubers programs on my site, which I approved, so you know that they're great. As I continue to build the site, I'm gonna be bringing my, more of my own programs there and more content from other YouTubers. Uh, Andrew Skidmore is one of those. He's gonna be coming here soon to film his program and putting it on my site as well the price point stays the same. And I really don't see any other website online where you not only get that, but then also get the community aspect because my website is also a social media platform. We have about 114,000 members where you guys can make friends with each other. You can talk to each other. You can upload progress photos. You can put videos on your profiles. I have a forum section. Like it's pretty legit. You guys are going to absolutely love it. Um, Nick Hillix, five, five, five triceps and biceps on the same day. I mean, you can, but it's really not, if you're doing a bodybuilding split, it's something people like to do when they have their arm days, but I think it's more effective to do the PPL. Honestly, that's what I've been leaning towards lately. Now, a beginner should be focusing, Kermes, a beginner should be focusing on building muscle because the strength is going to come as you're building the muscle anyway. So I would definitely focus on building muscle. Hey, Montana, what is what is NSUN's LP? I don't know what that is. Let me see, I'll Google it real quick. Oh, NSUN's lifting program. Looks like I'm gonna have to do some research, but I did pull it up. <laughs> Um, knee straps for heavy squatting advisable. Well, yes and no, depends on how heavy you're going. Because if you're doing like 225, that might not be heavy, even though it is heavy, it's not really heavy, you know what I mean? 
I wouldn't even, I like, I personally wouldn't start using knee straps until like over 300 pounds. Even, but for some other people, even 300 pounds isn't heavy. So heavy is relative to the person, you know? But I mean, yeah, whether they're knee sleeves or knee wraps, I mean, I, yeah. You basically what you're doing is you're holding the joint together, which allows you to lift more weight. So it's not like it's cheating or assistance, but you don't want to rely on them all the time. So if you're doing your warm-up sets, I wouldn't put your knee straps on, you know? What is the best chest workout, Scott? The best chest workout is going to be my Cheat and Recover program, which is coming out in a week. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. My other programs are great, too, in terms of bodybuilding. I have an amazing chest and triceps bodybuilding split that you can try. But if you want something new, definitely want to try my Cheat and Recover chest day. JRS Jacked. Why aren't you an actor anymore? <laughs> That's a good question. You know, when I was younger and I had gotten off of the, the real world Brooklyn, I was pursuing modeling and acting and I was really excited about it. And, you know, then I found YouTube and fitness. And to be honest with you guys, I'm glad that I decided to come home and do this business versus continue to live in New York City and pursue that because a lot, the majority of models and actors now looking back, they don't really make a lot of money and they're usually struggling. <laughs> all right. I mean, I, I do very well for myself. All right. I probably make more than a lot of the people you see in the movies you like, just because I have a, an actual sustainable business. You know what I mean? I mean, if I were to get any more jobs now, I would definitely do them, but I wouldn't pursue it as my, like my full career. I'd always keep my career based on what I know, which is fitness and continue to build my community and help you guys. But it comes down to just, you know, lifestyle and maximizing my time. And, you know, in order to make a lot of money being a model or an actor, you need to be like the best. And I don't, I don't think I would be the best. <laughs> I mean, it, I would try my hardest to be there, but I just haven't been in the game. You know, it's, it, I just haven't been in the game a long time. <laughs> but if more opportunities come, I'd be more than happy to do them. It looks like um, Tyrese pretty much kicked himself out of the Fast and Furious franchise. Who knows? Maybe they want another, you know, average American looking blonde hair, blue eyes guy to be in, in the franchise. I could I could jump into that. <laughs> yeah, it's OK, Montana. So many questions. It's over. It's overwhelming, but also really good at the same time. You know, I just want to say and I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, really quick, in the next five minutes, I'm giving this away worldwide. All right. So if you're not on the gravy platform, the link is in the info section of this video. If you're watching on YouTube, take the next five minutes to make a profile. It's free. It's easy to do. So you can enter my contest to win this. All right. It's 1254. You got until 1259 Eastern Standard Time to get your butts over here and make a profile. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, that's a good point. There's also a blue follow button for you guys to hit. Hey, let me, I can actually do this because I'm using a different camera. So if you're watching on YouTube, ah, this is the gravy platform, right? So click join right there. Click follow right there so you don't miss my live shows. And if you love me long time, there's a contribute button right there. You can send me a, a donation for doing these shows. And then this is the ask a question button right here, which you guys can't see because it's very bright. But I mean, they're green and blue. They're right there. There we go. You guys got four minutes left before the giveaway. How old are you and where are you from? I am 33 years old and I am from Boston, Massachusetts. 
<laughs> you got it, Keith. Gamey7, the best tip for losing fat. The best tip I can give you is literally just be consistent. That is the best tip you're going to get for fat loss. You have to be consistent with your workouts. You have to be consistent with your eating, and you got to stay focused. It's really that easy. It's not as complicated as, as the world makes it seem, guys. JGG has a good question. Um, you know, the best program. So I talk a lot about push-pull legs, but I'm actually going to be making – so the first push-pull legs cheat and recover program – well, the first cheat and recover program is going to be push-pull legs. I will also be making one for a traditional bodybuilding split, which is like chest and triceps, back and biceps, and then splitting the legs up into, two, into a few different days too. Um, in terms of which is better, they both work. If you have more time to go to the gym, then I could you could do the five-day split. But if your time is limited and you only have three days, then you go for the push-pull legs. But if you have more time and you want to try to build as much muscle as possible, you can do the push-pull legs and train six days a week and hit every body pot twice a week, which is more optimal than a five-day bodybuilding split. But if you're at a point where you're happy with your body and you're not trying to build muscle twice as fast, you can do the bodybuilding split and enjoy your workouts if that's what you like to do and still get results. So it's not a matter of what is what's better. It's it's what works best for your lifestyle and your goal. Two minutes, guys, two minutes to join gravy and win this prize. I think I have about 5,000 questions popping up over here <laughs> that you guys keep asking. Hey, man, I get tired after leg press to the point to where I can't work out anymore. Any solution for that? I mean, the leg press, you can push yourself really hard on the leg press. Maybe you're not eating enough food to keep up with your energy output. That could be it, man. Could be as simple as you're not eating enough food throughout the, not even the day, throughout the week to replenish your energy stores. So maybe start eating more. Ryan Marty asked a good question. I can actually relate to this. If you have time for another question, I run track and cross country. I only have time to work out after my running when it's running season uh, and I'm really tired, whatever, whatever, whatever. I get pre exhausted. What should I do? So I actually ran cross country in high school. And I told, so it was my, my social studies teacher was the coach and he was a super nice guy. And he, um, he asked me to join cross country because I knew I was really into fitness and I was on the wrestling team and I wasn't doing anything. So cross country and wrestling are different times of the year, you know? And I said, all right, I'll do, and you know, I'm a good runner. Like my fastest mile in high school was five minutes, believe it or not. I was like hauling ass <laughs> five minutes. Let me repeat that five minute mile guys. I was, that's what I ran in high school. I, I mean, I could probably still do it now if I train for it because I'm I like I get crazy when I run. Like I'll, I like yell. I'll like yell and scream. And I'll be like, Ugh! it. you know, my I was actually outside yesterday. We got like five feet of snow and I was out there with them in the backyard with my with my snowblower because I have to cut paths in my yard for my dog so he can run around and also to get to um, the oil because in New Hampshire we have oil tanks for our heat. And they're like the snow was so frozen. I was having such a hard time pushing this. And I was like yelling. I was like, yeah, I'm like, let's go. Right. I come in the house and my wife and daughter are like, we could hear you yelling outside. You sounded like a psychopath. I was like, that's because I am. Uh, anyways, I told my cross country coach, if I started losing muscle mass, that I was going to quit cross country. And after a few months, I did notice I was losing muscle mass. So I, I did end up quitting. But you know, looking back now that I'm much smarter um, in terms of fitness, I was losing muscle mass not because of cross country. It was because I wasn't eating enough food to keep up with the energy output of running and working out. So my response to you, Ryan Marty, is 
if you're having a hard time, you need to probably boost your calories by another 1,000 or 1,500 a day. Because seven miles a day is a lot. And then working out and then just being a kid and just like being really active, you need to boost those calories, bro. Now it is time for the giveaway. So here we go. Oh, I didn't even know I could scroll down here and see these things. <laughs> All right, so guys, we're going to start this giveaway. And hey, if you're enjoying the show, show some love by clicking that contribute button and you can donate to the channel and help support it and keep it going. All right, so let's go. Controls, sponsorships, props, spin the wheel. All right. Free bottle of N O Explode X E Worldwide. Lexi, I can do worldwide on spin the wheel, right? I just want to make sure. Um Lexi, can you just text me real quick and just say if that's the right thing? Hey, does anybody here play Dokkan Battle on their phone? Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle? I've been making like insane amount of videos for that on my other channel, Oh the Hermanity. So if you like that game, check. Or if you like Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super in general, thanks, Lexi. Um, go to my other channel, Oh the Hermanity, because I've been doing all kinds of stuff there lately, like insane. Anyways, all right, here we go. So guys, don't worry. Don't worry about putting your address in. So I'm giving away right now. If you're watching on YouTube, you have no idea what's going on. So you need to go to the link. You get two minutes. Click the link below. Go to Gravy. Make a profile. It takes two seconds. And then enter my contest to win BSN NO Explode XE Energy worldwide, guys. Um, hold on. I'm reading some of these questions over here. <laughs> I'm 11. Should I drink this? Mm, if I was 11, I would. <laughs> well, no, actually, 11 is really young. I've been drinking, you know, energy drinks since I was 14. But you know the difference between when I was 14 years old drinking energy drinks and you guys drinking them now? When I was 14, they had like insane amounts of ephedra in it. But a fadger is illegal now, so you can't you can't get it. But yeah, I mean the bottle says 18, so I'm gonna say if you're 18, that's the only way you should be drinking this stuff legally. That's what I have to say to you. So that's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> 18 years old. But yeah, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you're not gonna be able to enter the contest. So please come to Gravy, make a profile, it takes two seconds, and 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 participate in my giveaways. Cause you know. You guys on YouTube, you support me. I want to make sure I can give you guys stuff and, and, and have you guys win free stuff when I do these live shows too. So even if you just make a profile just to participate in the giveaways, I'm, I won't be offended by that. <laughs> That's all you have to do is fine. And you can keep watching from YouTube. But, you know, coming here is obviously a lot more fun. Um, so come on over. You guys got 10 seconds. We got 66 people entered in the contest. All right, here we go. Here we go. And I'm at I'm at 299 followers on my gravy profile. So, let's get the 300, okay? We're like we're literally one person away. So, come on over from YouTube. All right, we're going to spin the wheel. So, you know what I'm going to actually do because I have my camera. So, for you guys on YouTube, this is what you're missing out on. So, I have this wheel, right? And this wheel is going to spin, and it's going to give me a random winner. Here we go. Spin the wheel. So we got 60 people who entered the contest. Oh, we just gained we just gained uh, eight more followers. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the support. There you go. And again, here's the ask a question button if you guys have a question. Um, and I did see that question that just popped up. I'll get to it after I spin the wheel, okay? 
Here we go. Is it good? Ah, uh, Nicholas, John, Cormas, and Idro, and you guys are probably all feeling super shafted right now. Oh, it's Ryan Marty. Nice. And you actually asked a few questions today. Marty, do you want to come on stage? I'm going to approve you if you want to come on hey. stage and say hello. So, like I said, um, Ryan, I'm going to be emailing you. Please check your spam because if my email goes to your spam, you will not get your prize. All right? So, I will email you. I'll email you as soon as the show is over. Um, actually, I might even just email you right now just to make sure you get it. All right. I'm so excited. Wow, I didn't expect that. You know, I'm going to – so, Doug, Doug Milnes, are you helping people or selling supplements to make money? Scooby is right. Dude, you are an asshole. Am I helping people? And I'm going to call you out because this is really pissing me off. You're pissing me off right now. Look at my channel. How many channels on YouTube? Go in the comments section and answer 90% of the comments. That shit isn't – they don't pay for that. That's free. That's my time. Go to my website. Every single question, every forum post has a response from me. Go to my Facebook page. Go to my Instagram. All those responses is me helping people. So why don't you just take your attitude and leave my channel? Because I don't need your bullshit here. If you're going to be ignorant or if you're going to leave a comment, do your research first, bro. Just, just, just leave. I don't need you here. Seriously. Anyways, back to the fun. <laughs> yeah, Callie, Dragon Ball Super tonight. Well, so it looks like Marty's not coming on stage. Um, but I'm on stage. Uh, Lexi, send me his email. I want to email him right now. Make sure I can send him send this to him. Uh, Gabriel. Uh, Lexi, Gabriel Ralph says that uh, Gravy won't let him log in. All right, disconnect guest and spin the wheel. So congratulations, Monty. That was awesome. It's okay, uh, TKD Morton. Some people are just, they just got nothing better to do than just be little douchebags. It's life. It happens. That's the major. You know, unfortunately, it happens a lot. <laughs> Sorry, you guys had to see me get a little angry. Thanks, Haywin Raiden. <laughs> Boom, Dingleberry. Damn, Scott went the f off. <laughs> Can I tell you guys a funny story? Oh man, I feel like you know, oh, like. I am a, I'm a good person, okay? I know I'm a good person. You know, just like if you're a good person, you know you're a good person. But I have like a, I do have like, it's yin and yang, you know? We all have that good side and we all have that evil side. And in order to really maximize life or your, your own true potential, you know, you can't avoid your, your evil side. You know what I mean? And it doesn't necessarily have to be evil. It's just like that part of your personality. You can't avoid that. Like you have to learn how to take that and then have it coincide with your good side and have it work together so you can maximize, you know, your life energy. If you believe in that kind of stuff. But like for me, I can get so angry and then just flip a switch and be happy again. And it, and it freaks people out when they see me get to that point. <laughs> but I just have control. I have control over my anger. Like I can get really, really mad and then just switch it. I think it's a good thing. It's kind of like when you, oh, thanks, Lexi. I'm going to, um, I'm going to send you a uh, email right now, Ryan, after I get to this paid question. Yeah, it's jeering mode. Exactly, Nick. So let me get to this. Um, somebody asked a question. I want to get to that real quick just in case they, they have a time schedule. So here we go. Uh, boom, boom. Oh, <laughs> not boom. It's boob man. 33 
hey, I'm a boob man too, so I can't I can't get mad at you for that for that profile. Uh, had a month off. Now using your push pull leg split. I ached three days after push. Now I have to do legs. Do I go 100%? So that's a really good question, boob man. Um, if you had a month off and you got really sore doing a workout, that's normal. And what I usually recommend to people is if you had a lot of time off from the gym and you're coming back in, I would say for the first week, maybe two weeks, like week one, maybe go like 50% intensity and then week two, go 75%. And then by week three, you're hitting it as hard as you possibly can. And the reason why is because of what you just said, you got extremely sore after that first workout because you you know mentally how heavy you can lift and what you've done in the past. But after taking a month off and going back to that intensity, your body's not ready for it. And that's why it's incredibly sore. So you want to be able to do the entire workout every week and not be so sore. You can't go to the gym. And the way you avoid that is by, you know, taking it 50%, maybe week one, 75% week two. And then by week three, you're at a hundred percent intensity in the gym. And don't worry about like your progress or, or that you won't build as much muscle because your body is, is reacting, you know, and it's almost like you, you your body is so sore because you gave it too much intensity off the bat. So, and also make sure you're eating enough food, drinking your BCAAs, you know, getting enough recovery, getting enough sleep, and that should help you out. So, um, let me know if that answers your question, my bro. And I can, if you have any more questions to add to that, I can answer those too. I'm gonna look for you down here. Lifted, lifted safe. Oh, one. You watch too much anime. Is that even is that even possible to watch too much anime? I mean, I don't think so. Anime is life. I had somebody leave a comment on my other channel, Older Humanity, talking smack because I'm an adult, like making anime videos. And I said, I said, bro, anime is a billion dollar industry. Are you like stupid when it comes in when it comes to business? And if there's an interest there, why and you like that? And it's a huge industry. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that in order to better your life and your well-being, right? Like, what is the goal in life? To have a job and earning income doing something you love. I love anime and I love fitness. And I've been able to build a life out of that. I think I'm really smart. You can never watch too much anime. Anime is awesome. Anime is life. You can mute people. Let me see. Well, hold on. Before I forget, um, I'm going to email you really quick, Marty. I just want to make sure you got it. And then when you see my email, I want you to respond with your address so I can send you your prize. And just so people know that these prizes do get sent out because <laughs> they do. R-Y-A-N dot Marty. At B O I Thank you guys for coming me. Make sure you got that in reply, please. So CO hack will mass gainer help me lift heavier? Yes and no. If your calories are low because you're not eating enough food and you start taking a mass gainer and that brings your calories up past maintenance and into surplus, then yeah, you'll lift heavier because you're under eating. Does the mass gainer spark some sort of like hidden potential you have in your body to make you lift heavier? No, it doesn't. It's just food. Let me just make sure I didn't miss any questions. And guys, like I said, if you have a question, you can click on ask a question down there to make sure that I see it. Nope, Boob Man was the last one. Um, did Boob Man respond? Did anybody see Boob Man respond in here? Uh, Nick WZX, how do I stop my shoulder from clicking? If it's clicking and there's no pain, you should be fine. Um, but if there's pain, I do have a, a shoulder warm up video you can check out on YouTube. I would definitely start there. 
Socio hack. I already answered your question. Stop asking it over and over and over and over and over again. I don't want to have to hide you, dude, but I will. Come on. Be respectful of everybody else. Let me see. I'm just I'm trying to go through the questions. <laughs> it looks like you guys are doing a good job. I see I see Montana and Andrew in here a lot answering questions. So um Peter Pan, I actually did a, I did respond to a wrist pain question earlier in this video. Um, just rewind it a bit and you can see my answer there. Hi, uh, Hanny S. Hi, Scott. I'm following your push pull legs. I'm on the second phase. Perf I'm on the second phase I do for two months. I'm gaining a lot of muscle and losing fat. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome, honey. I really like hearing that. Nothing makes me happier than when I see people who are doing my program and they're getting results. So that's just great, man. Keep up the amazing work. I love that. Shadow Crone. Uh, so, Scott, other than my bodybuilding, I do cosplay. Going to be making Koga from Inuit. Oh, really? Koga's a cool character, man. You know, I was actually telling my wife, I'm like, I love Inuyasha. It's one of my favorite animes of all time, but I don't own any of the seasons. So I'm going to start buying that, adding to my collection. Um, oh, you were just saying thank you. That's great, man. Hey, when you make that Koga costume, please post a photo somewhere I can see it, uh, preferably on my website, muscularstrength.com. Hey, um, Lexi, how come the YouTube comments stopped coming in? Ryan Marty, did you check your spam? Let me make sure I typed in your email address. 21 R-Y-A-N M-A-R-T-Y B-O-I-S B-O-I-S-E B O I S E schools dot I typed it incorrectly, Ryan. Let me see. Yeah, Boise Schools dot net. Are you checking that email? Tim 1000. Hey, Scott, if a muscle is sore, hold on. And again, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, come to Gravy so I can answer your questions. Hey, Scott, if a muscle is sore, should I refrain from working out that muscle until the soreness goes away? Um, if it's been like two days, you could hit it again and maybe start off light. Don't, don't overexert yourself. Um, but you should be able to train a muscle group every 36 hours if you're doing like a traditional bodybuilding program. Uh, if it's full body type lifting you're doing or circuit type training and you want to train the day after and you're sore, you can still train. Just take it easy. If anything, the training will help bring push old blood out of the area and, and have new blood come in, that, which brings more oxygen, vitamins and minerals, which helps with, with the repair and growth process. So that should be OK. Uh, job Joe Dodo -do, can one train without supplements? Um, the answer is yes. All you need is food. Um, Marty, did you get it? Uh, sent it. Sorry, guys. I know you can't see what I'm doing, and it's probably not the most interesting thing to watch. Just give me a second. I just like to make sure people get their prizes. Okay, Marty, I have, I have your address, um, but you need to, you need to send me your zip code. So, hold on, send me your zip code to your address, and we should be good. All right, good, got it, awesome. You're gonna get your prize.
All right, guys. So I have about another 10 minutes before I got to end the stream. So if you have a question that you really want to get answered, click on the blue ask a question button and I will definitely see it. Um, and if you're enjoying the stream and you want to see more, you can show your support by clicking the contribute button. And if you haven't clicked on the blue follow button to make sure you don't miss the live streams, make sure you click that next. I feel like I haven't brought anybody on stage in a while. Does anybody want to come on stage? Yeah. Besides you, Andrew, <laughs> it might be. Uh, I will bring you on, Andrew, but let me, um, I want to end this show doing something fun. Let me bring on somebody new first and then I'll bring Andrew on. So we got, okay, chest pumper. Here we go. Remember, keep it PG, guys. I don't want to see um, anything crazy on here. <laughs> All right, chest pumper. No booty flash. <laughs> All right, Ryan. I'll send out your. I'll be sending out your prize uh, first thing on Monday. Okay. So I've actually been to Boise, Idaho. Believe it or not. All right, which is where you're from. And I was invited there to do a college like um, thing because when I was on the real world, that was like the cool thing to do. When you got off a reality show, you would get sent to like colleges or whatever to do appearances. Um, and believe it or not, there was like a, there was an event going on and I was on stage with the group Everclear and that was really cool. So there's my Boise, Idaho story. Oh, it's like an early bird. Oh, see, that makes me so happy. It's an early birthday present. Uh, yif me daddy. Um, I try to answer. So basically I, tr I mean, I'm getting, I probably have like 2000 questions, right? I try to answer as many questions as I can as I see them in the feed. But obviously, it doesn't. if there's 2,000 questions, I'm not going to see every question. So that's why there's the ask a question button. Yeah, you pay a fee, but you get your question answered guaranteed. And I mean, obviously, I'm going to answer your question with as much knowledge as possible to help you. So it's not like you're going to get a generic you know, answer to your question. You're going to get a good answer to your question. So that's why it's there. All right, so Chess Pumper said his camera just shattered. So anybody else want to come on stage that isn't Andrew? <laughs> you know what? Ryan just won. So let's bring him on stage and then we'll get we'll get a few others on there too. So we're going to bring on Ryan and we're going to wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> Saki, you're so funny. Oh, man. If you guys are watching on YouTube, the link is in the comment section below. Huh. It doesn't seem to be working. Hey, Ryan, refresh your um, refresh your page real quick on, on uh, Chrome. And that might make it work. Kurt, hey, Scott, I just found out about shoulder packing from watching your videos. Should I pack my shoulders on every weight lifting exercise or just back and chest exercises? To be honest, Kurt, for the most part, you... section of... I think off the top of my head. I mean, you always shoulder pack like that like even when you deadlift you can't shoulder pack but you still want to have a neutral grip when you come down and pick up the bar do you know what i mean so uh i'm not sure why marty's camera is not working let me i just got a question i want to answer that question real quick uh cabulos do you prefer to work out in the morning, afternoon, or at night, and why? So I prefer to work out like afternoon around 2 or 3 o'clock. And the reason is for a few different reasons. Number one, I just don't have the time to work out at night anymore 
because then by the time I get home, I can't do anything else on my computer because it's too late and I need to go to bed. Um, I don't work out in the morning because usually when I wake up, I have a lot of stuff to do in the morning and my body's not acclimated to morning workouts yet. So if you've never worked out in the morning before and you're starting to change to a morning workout, it's going to suck for like probably a few weeks because you're not used to it. Um, but then once you get used to it, from what I hear from my friends is that they love it like more than anything. For me, I wake up, I eat my food, I get on the computer, I edit videos, I do emails, all that stuff. And for me, working out like around three o'clock is like a break from like life. I get to go to the gym, I do my workout, um, and then I come back home and then I have a few more hours to do some work with my tech team and my app team. And it works out best for my schedule. However, this is kind of some, like some early news for you guys. But I'm actually going to be moving at some point this year, and I'm going to be moving to Florida. And the house that I'm buying, I'm going to be able to have my basically my gym, all my weights, my power rack, my cable machine, all of that is going to fit in my house. Like, insane, okay? And I think once I do that, I'll probably start working out in the morning because it's not like I have to get up, get dressed, get in a car, and go to a gym and do a workout. By the time I would have done that, if I have my gym in my house, I'm already halfway done with my workout. And then I can even take a break later in the day and do some cardio or something. So I'm, re I'm actually really excited about that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically the, I hope that answers your question. So whatever works best for your schedule, um, there's no better time. It's what, whatever time you can give it your all, that's when you want to go to the gym. I hope that helps. <laughs> you want to rent a room? Sure. <laughs> you can rent a room. Um, and then I just want to say I saw, oh, Montana123. Thanks for the contribution, bro. It means a lot. All right. So we're going to try one more person to come on stage. And if it doesn't work, we're going to bring Andrew on here. All right. Grag28. All right. I'll do Grag and then I'll do Lifted. I'll do you both. That's that sounded wrong. I'm not going to do you both. I'll bring you both on. <laughs> I think the I think the caffeine's kicking in. <laughs> uh, okay. So here's Greg. What's up, man? How's it going? How's it going? Hey, welcome to uh to the online platform. I hope you uh you're enjoying the show. You've been here since the beginning. Yeah. So, man, tell, who start. are you? Tell us about yourself. Uh, I'm from North Carolina. I've been listening I was just for about in North Carolina. two years now. I my bed uh, bugs. I've been watching your show all morning. <laughs> I was I was just in North Carolina for a photo shoot, and I got bed bugs from one of the hotels. <laughs> Other than that, I had a good oh, time. Oh, dang! <laughs> I, I see how you talking about wrestling earlier. I actually think I still got mocks. Yeah, they're they're almost gone now. Uh, but I did you guys see the videos where I had like two red dots right here? It's because I had those are bed bug bites. They were like unicorn horns coming out of my head. It was horrible. So how's lifting going, man? It's it's going good. I kind of hit a uh, plateau for a while. I can't get my biceps any bigger, but they're going from like. A lot softer to Have a you, lot. Did you try the video tighter. I put out a couple weeks ago with the incline dumbbell curl, the overloading? Dude, like the let me ask you a question. Yeah. The first yeah. time you did that, how sore were your biceps for like the week? Pretty sore for like it wasn't the day like after, but the two yeah. days after. It's like a shock really, to the really system, sore. right? Yeah. So, uh, what so in high school, in high I was school? um 135s my freshman year, and then I hit a growth spurt, and then I was 152s my sophomore and junior year, and then I, I actually had, I didn't wrestle my senior year because I got into um, ultimate kickboxing, but yeah, so 152s towards the end of my career wrestling. Yeah. What, what's your signature move? I'm assuming you're a wrestler. 
Yeah. Oh um, yeah. That's a fun I'll move to do to somebody. And it's when you beat, it's like some moves when you beat people, like we had a kid in our team that could do a splato every single match. And it was just like his way to humu- humiliate his opponents. So every single match and then a splato. You guys aren't wrestlers. Basically a splato is when your like shoulders are on the mat and your crotch is pretty much in your face because your legs are being pulled this way. So it like, it hurts a lot <laughs> and you get pinned real quick doing it. But my signature move was a cross face cradle. And I would basically, I would cross face kids until their nose was about to break. And then I would wrap them up and then I would smash their face off the mat until they gave up. Then I would lock it up and then I would pin them. So cross face cradle. And then that sounds really um, intense. It was, but that's how I won. <laughs> When I was in high school, yeah. I weighed a lot less than I do now. And so I went and trained with yeah. the high school wrestling team last week because I was the team captain when I was there. And I didn't weight lift much when I was in high school, but now I do a lot. And when I went, I didn't realize how much of a strength difference it makes and how much better you can do oh, once gosh, you actually yeah. start lifting. So I went in there, haven't wrestled oh, for yeah, years, man. and just killed I mean, everybody. I wasn't the best wrestler on my team technique wise i kind of just relied on a few on a few moves to to win my matches but i would wrestle like we had a lot of um like new england champions on our team we had like seven new england champions on our team it was insane and the kids that were more around my weight class would wrestle me and they would have a really hard time and it wasn't because i was the best wrestler i was just stronger than them like i would i would grab their wrist and I, they would not be able to break my grip, and I would just like, you know, mess with them. And you know, then they would eventually beat me technique-wise, but <laughs> it took them a while, and they would get pissed. But you're right. I talk to a lot of wrestlers now, and they're like, "What should I do for a workout?" And I'm just heavy squatting, benching, and deadlifting. That way, you don't explode your weight class, but you get strong as hell. And yeah, you're you're 100 right, man. It works. Awesome. Yeah. I was the one that asked oh, earlier okay. about yeah. the hip flexor thing. So when when you were talking about that, when I like go to squat and stuff, my hips feel like they're kind of getting out of place and stuff or popping when I'm at the bottom and they get really tight. Is that something where I should kind of stop and not go any further with it and do like hip flexor workouts or should so what I you should just do is squat you should start squatting a little lighter and then in between every set, you're literally – I don't have my foam roller up here, but you're, you're going to put a foam roller on the ground, and you're literally going to go like like from here to here and just foam roll this entire area on both sides and really like get in deep into those hips. And I'm telling you, if you do that in between all your sets, it's really going to help loosen you up because it helped me out a lot too. I was having the same problem just because – I sit a lot because I edit a lot and because I'm sitting all the time, my hips, my hip flexors are getting really tight and I was actually starting to have a hard time squatting. And once I started just foam rolling, then I was good. Yeah. So I'm scared to go like super. I mean, heavy you should be. You're probably going to get injured. Gonna, like get injured. <laughs> so you need to foam roll. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, um, I'm gonna ha- try to bring somebody else on here before I sign off. But hey, thanks so much for participating in the in the stream today and coming on stage. Yeah, man, and good luck. Let me know uh, how that full it. works out for you. Awesome. See All you, right. man. I will. Thanks. See ya. <laughs> I would love to be the dude. The Rock is everywhere. Oh, we actually shit. just went to see. Um, hold on, I'm bringing Kevbo on stage. Come on. Hey, what's Please. up, man? Hey, what's up? Um, hold on. I'm just. This is the first time I've ever done this. I I wasn't even sure this was gonna work. So I'm on my phone. Oh, you're on your phone right now. Oh, good. I'm oh, glad yeah. the phone's yeah. working. <laughs> Lexi said you look like Harry Potter. Yeah, I. Although I have an iPhone. Oh, it's uh, you know, probably a little different. 
Oh, thanks. I, I actually, I get that a lot that I look like <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. I don't see it, but take advantage of it, man. Like go into a restaurant um, and be like, I'm Daniel Radcliffe. I'd like a, I'd like a table by the window. Actually, the the episode of Family oh, Guy no, was on last I... night when Peter and Lois go on their second honeymoon, and then Peter crashes the car, and then they see an ad for a hotel where Mel Gibson stays, and Peter goes dressed as Mel Gibson, and he's like, "Oh, I'm preparing for a role where I play a fat guy," and they let him in. <laughs> they basically steal. Episode, but, uh, they basically okay. steal the Passion uh, of the Christ too from Mel Gibson's hotel suite. Oh, wait, now I remember that episode. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, that was that was crazy. I, I actually, hold on, I can't do a British accent. Yeah, you do, do sound do pretty sound British. Like yeah, Lexi says yes, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> actually, um, I wanted to talk about movies. Uh, what, would, what would you say, you're probably blocking your mic. Oh, yeah, your, your hand was quiet. blocking do, your do microphone. I? Yeah, might have been for a second. Is, is it okay yeah, everyone's now? saying better. Okay, all right. Um, I actually, I want to talk about movies. Uh, what, what would you say that your favorite movie? Oh man, were? you know I have like six hundred Blu-rays, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, give me like. Oh a, my gosh. A top, top five or top ten. Of of twenty seventeen. Like, particular order. I would say Thor Ragnarok yeah. was definitely. One of them. Like, that was a really okay. fun movie. <sighs> like, oh, yeah, I loved it. I loved it's kind of like a blur, like, what actually came out. I would say number one is going to be between uh, Kingsman, Golden Circle, and Thor Ragnarok. Because they're different genres. But, man, Kingsman is such a good friggin' movie. Both of them were so good. You guys all seen Kingsman, right? Actually, um, can you smell what social hack is cooking? You guys are so funny in the comment it. section, dude. You haven't seen Kingsman? You have got to see Kingsman, man! It is such an amazing movie. Yeah. Really, the only reason I didn't see the Kingsman movie that came out this year is oh I yeah, you definitely you have to watch one. the first one. Um, oh, that actually yeah, brings up a good. Didn't John Wick two come yeah, out this year? Because like that, that movie was fire too. Oh. That's Mahadi Camaro 67, I got to say what's up because I have two Camaros. Sorry, uh, Kevbo, I get a little sidetracked sometimes. Lexi saying Star That's Wars. Okay. You know okay. what? I haven't um, seen the new Star Wars yet, Lexi. I have, and let me tell you, I liked it. I thought it was good, but a lot of people seem to hate it. Like, they despise it, and I don't get it i really don't understand why people hate the new star wars so much like there are people who say that it's not only they, they say that it's worse than the prequels and i just because I don't people i don't like, understand the what, average what, person should not be a movie critic like you get people who go to the marvel movie and they'll be like no, oh, no here's the thing. that's too far-fetched that would never happen no shit <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that everything that happens in a Marvel movie won't happen in real life. You know what I mean? Okay, but here's the thing, though. It's not average people that are hating on the new Star Wars. It's, like, diehard Star Wars fans that hate it. Like, they think that it ruins the franchise for some reason, and I just don't get it. Like, yeah, okay, there's a few things that I can see you know, you having a problem with here and there, you know, without giving too much away, like, there are a few things that I personally had kind of a problem with, like, it's like, eh, that's not really right, or, oh, why did this character do that? But, like, I wouldn't say it was a bad movie, let alone worse than the prequels. Uh, okay, here's the thing. The reason I'm talking about, uh, I see, actually, a lot of movies. Well, we're, real I quick, somebody said and, um, uh, Baby Driver and Wonder Woman, and yes, those are on my list. If you haven't seen Baby Driver yet, that is a really good movie. I actually have a, I have a friend who has the same That's condition, um, where his ears are always ringing, and so for him it was actually cool to see a movie where somebody actually had the same condition as him. Sorry to cut you off. I just the comments come up here. I don't want people to think that I'm not paying attention to them. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm sorry. It's just that uh, you're, you, the video for you is frozen right now. I can hear you, but like. It's probably it's, like, just because stuff, you're like, on your phone, video. but that's okay. Oh. Okay, right. uh, I mean, I haven't yeah. seen, so I've yeah, already watched um, like a ton of videos on the new Star Wars. And I think what happens, and I, I don't own any Star Wars movies yet, but it's because I know, I know once all the Star Wars movies have been made, I know they're going to come out with like some kind of insane like collector's edition. And I'm waiting to buy that. That's the only reason why I don't own Star Wars right now. But what happens is, if you look at these early movies, right, like any movies made from like the 90s and before the 90s, people would go to the movies and, and want to see a story and would want to see like things played out. And like they don't mind if it wasn't action the entire time. Today's generation, like if they go to a movie and they don't have like constant action in their face the entire time, they think it's a bad movie. And that, that does affect how stories are told. So People who say the older Star Wars movies are better, well, it's, I think it's because back then you could do a bit more storytelling and have these more elaborate sets and, and do these things because you didn't have the technology you have now. So more work had to go into creating these sets and really maximizing them. Where today, there's a lot more CGI and everyone wants like constant, constant action. So maybe you don't get like, that full character development that you're used to, especially for someone in my generation or, or your generation and older. And my wife and I talk about that all the time. It's like these old movies that have really good stories, they don't even make it to the box office anymore because kids don't want to see them. They're like, oh, that's boring. I want to go see uh, a Marvel movie with superheroes and fighting and smashing and lasers and stuff. So Star Wars kind of had to maybe change their direction a bit and how they make their movies. But I still think that the the previous ones that I have watched, like cinematically, you know, the ro the Rogue one, what's it called? Rogue? Rogue one? Like, I mean, I thought it Rogue sucked. One. They both yeah. died at the end. Sorry if I spoiled it for you, but that movie's been out for a while. Uh oh Well, yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, what were you expecting? Like, you know, like, you know. These characters are obviously very important, and yet, you know, you never see them in any of the other movies. It's like, there's got to be a reason for that. Oh, that's a good you question. Know, so, Apple, so was did the new Fast and Furious come out this year, too? Because that movie was uh, sick. Yes, and Apple is in those, why okay. do you think Fast and Furious okay. always does good? I think it's because they they change with the times. If, you, if you've never seen the first Fast and Furious movie, you go watch it. You're literally going to watch it and be like, this movie sucks <laughs> compared to, like, how the franchise is now, you know? I mean, I still love it. I, I saw Fast and Furious in the movie theaters, but that's because when I was in high school, that's what everybody was doing. Like, everybody was, like, souping up Hondas and Eclipses and, like, you know, ricing them out. So the movie, the movie was cool because it, it kind of correlated with what was happening in real life at the time. Now... You know, you'll never see a souped up Honda in a Fast and Furious movie. It's just not going to happen, you know? So it's like movies have to change with what's popular in order to stay relevant. And also The Rock being added to the addition, you know, definitely helped. <laughs> yeah, I actually, um, that's another one of the movies. I, you know, I'm actually going to probably disappoint you with how many movies I haven't seen just simply because there are because like they're a sequel to a movie that I haven't seen and I haven't actually seen any of the Fast and Furious movies and I'm like I do not have time to see all seven. Just start one at a time, I'm man. Sorry, nobody got time for that. I you know, I'll get to it eventually. I'll see them eventually. Um I'm sure I will. Um because I heard that the 8th one was really good. Like it was a lot of fun and I'm sure it is. I um, you know, cause I told you that I work at a movie theater, right? So I actually, I do like little like walks. So I have seen like clips of it. And from what I've seen, it's like, yeah, this is kind of fun. This is kind of neat. This is kind of cool. So yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably catch around. To well, the thing with Fast and Furious is people who watch those uh, movies and then like in the seventh one, I think it was where they, they jump, um, I, I forget what car it is, but it's like a, it's like a billion dollar car or whatever. I don't know. They jump it across three skyscrapers. And people were like, that couldn't happen. No shit. Like, you don't go watch a Fast and Furious movie to figure out what what could and couldn't happen 
What was it like? Hey, hi, babe. babe. Hey, babe. What's up? What's up? Let's do my thing. You want to say hi? Yeah. Oh. Kevbo says hi. Hi, Erica. Let me I say hi to you, you guys. Oh, geez. <laughs> no, these are my Skittles. Touch this, this is what I really came here to do. Let me show them. I came here to steal Scott Skittles. <laughs> he gets so mad. Hi, guys. She bought me Skittles for Christmas, and yet every time I go to the bedroom, her hand's in the bag. I got to start hiding this. I bought this with ulterior motives, babe, but I love you. I do, too. Have fun, guys. <laughs> so um, what was it? I think Fast Five. You don't know this, but there was a part of the movie where basically Vin Diesel is on the roof of his car going really fast. And his girlfriend was on the top of a tank or whatever. And they both got, she got thrown off of the, of the tank. And then he wanted to save her. So he crashes his car into like a wall and shoots across like a bridge, catches her in midair, and then lands on like a windshield of another car, which totally would never happen. And if it did, they both probably would have died from the impact because they're going like 80 miles an hour. And people are like, that couldn't happen. And it's like, no shit, it couldn't. Ha like you're going to be entertained, not not to see what what could really happen in real life, you know. Yeah, n like I, I used to be like that, but nowadays, whenever I see something absolutely ridiculous in a movie like that, like um, for example, um, I saw I did recently see Pitch Perfect three. My At daughter time, just went to go see it like an hour so ago. Any money to see it. Hey, I like the Pitch Perfect movies. Okay. They're worth, um, they're worth okay, renting. So I'm entertained. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, I'm just... Okay, Um, but there was a scene in the climax where uh, Rebel Wilson does a backflip, and I just thought that was so ridiculous. I couldn't help but laugh at that. That was probably... To me, that was the funniest part of the movie. Because <laughs> she's, like, fighting this guy in, like, you know... On her father's yacht. Oh yeah, like uh, I guess spoiler alert. Um, spoiler I mean, alert? I don't, no. I don't mind. It's not a movie that I'm gonna be disappointed if I know what happens. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, so, um, so the climax of the movie, like Rebel Wilson, uh, you know, Fat Amy, her father, her estranged father is like, I don't know, he's <laughs> of like course, a gang member or drug lord <laughs> or something, and he basically kidnaps, he kidnaps all the Bellas and uh holds them for uh you know hostage and you know fat amy has to go save them you know but he holds them hostage so that she can so that he can have like a, some inheritance that her mother gave her something like that and so th she has to which now that i'm describing it out loud this is pretty crazy that this happens in a pitch perfect movie now that I've, <laughs> I've, i'm saying it all out loud but um but yeah, like and she, so she's like freaking black widowing her way on her like father's yacht. Like, so this movie know, completely like, takes a turn, like a complete so like turn from what it's about. Uh, well, no, it it does kind of still have to do with acapella because um Anna Kendrick, uh, you know she she's one of the she's the only other Bella that wasn't kidnapped, and she um works with uh rebel with a uh, fat amy to to sneak onto the uh yacht and she and the other bellas distract her father by doing uh an acapella performance oh my of toxic by britney spears that's actually in the very beginning of the movie it actually starts in media res and then it says like then like it goes like three weeks earlier and so it like it's it's almost like the that uh you know that trope that yep like freeze frame yep that's me but I should probably start from the beginning it pretty much does that except without the narrative. Sounds like an interesting movie. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch it when it comes out. No, I mean like on on well, like no, rent. It's already, it is out. Oh oh on DVD. Oh, yeah. Right right yeah. I right. did see it's Jumanji right. though and I did um, I did enjoy it. So did you see Jumanji fine. yet? I did see Jumanji, and um, to be honest, I didn't have very high expectations for it, but I will say um, I was actually pretty pleased with it, because I was afraid that um, the writers of it, like, because 
a lot of the times what happens when there's like movies or TV shows about video games, usually it's like written by like some executives who've like never played a video game. I actually saw a video that talked about why well, most video sure. game movies tank and it's, they actually do it on purpose so that they can actually get money back through show companies and different cut. Like they they hire like certain shitty direct, like I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a video on a YouTube channel called film theory. If you look at it, Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, Matt I watch, Pat, yeah. I watch Matt, Matt Pat. <laughs> Look Matt at Kieran Mess. Remember when this, like, yeah, you should, you, you know, that's like, usually what happens when I start bringing people on stage is it goes from fitness to like everything else. So that's what we did an hour and a half of fitness. Now we're talking about random stuff. That's just, you know, we're having fun. Yeah. You should, uh, you should invite That would be fun. To, I uh, might, yeah. Now, lab. well, now that my other channel is doing so well. Uh, my other channel, my gaming and my my anime channel, I, I decided to bring it back to life like a month ago. Um, I'm actually starting to, to talk to a few different other big YouTubers that do that stuff too. So it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. Yeah, but um, I'm not talking about movies based on video games. Oh, yeah. Well, movies, like, Dumanji wasn't really games, about a game. Like, it was very... It was and it wasn't. Like once they were well, in the game, game, it was like, basically just like an action movie, and which is which is good. Yeah, but I like the little touches, like uh, like for example, all the other people in the game are are uh, NCPs, uh, and like they act like NCPs, like they repeat the same things over and over again, you know. And like I like that one part where the little boy, um, you know, was talking to the Rock's character and the jack black teenage girl character like talked to him and then he just ignored her and and talked to uh the rock again he's just and yeah black yeah black there's a lot of funny like Rude. jack Bla jack black actually did a really good job in that movie playing a 16 year old girl <laughs> i thought so at least yeah although um, i think there might have been one too many jokes about a teenage girl having a penis because, hold on, because this means that this game, this video game, has anatomically correct avatar. Okay, uh, did anyone, okay, sorry about that, my browser froze. Mine did too. Yeah, I, I had to like reset it and, uh, go out again. Um, but anyway, what was I saying? I was talking about like how weird it is that Jumanji the game, which is apparently sentient now, um. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, I'm, you know, whatever, uh. It created its avatars to be anatomically correct and have bodily functions. Like, um, that's a little strange because uh, most video games, uh, they don't do that. Yeah, but I mean, I, I did enjoy it. And I like the, the subtle, for those of you who haven't seen Jumanji, I won't ruin it. But they did have a, a few very subtle throwbacks to Robin Williams, which I thought was really cool. Oh, yeah, like, um. Oh, yeah, no, tell him, let him. Okay. Don't spoil it for him because it's nice. It's nice to find out on your own. Yeah, there were a few, and it does. It does kind of make sense that the I see when I first heard of it, I was just like, "Oh, great! They're gonna what? They're gonna make it a video game? Like that's nothing like the original." But you know, but then I saw that one trailer where it turns out that it's a video game because the game itself, you know, is like adapting to modern day, and it's like, okay, all right, well, that kind of works. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
but then uh but yeah but then it's like you know why like jumanji why are you making why did you render your characters with penises that's most video games don't do that unless it's like you know in a you know an m-rated game or a an ao game like it, like I don't even think Grand Theft Auto does that. Do they do that? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, they just needed to have some fun. <laughs> just... But um, hey, guys. So it's about 2 o'clock now. Um, sorry to cut you off, Kevbo. But I actually right. I do got to get going. I got some other, I gotta start doing some stuff around the house. Um, but hey, if you guys enjoyed the stream and you want to see more, I know Andrew. Andrew, I'll bring you on first next time. I promise. I just wanted to get some new blood on here. <laughs> Andrew's gonna Andrew's gonna cry. That's okay. Just get just, just take that. Just take it to the gym, Andrew. You'll be fine. <laughs> but um, guys, I had a lot of fun hanging out with you and chatting. And thank you, Kevbo and and Marty for participating. And um, who's the other guy we had on here um, doing the the live show? I forgot his username. Uh, but thank you, guys. Oh yeah, Greg. Greg came on. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and we'll definitely be doing more live shows, possibly make once a week every Sunday. So keep your schedules open. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Kebbo, I'm going to have to come wherever you are get some free movie passes, man. Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm actually also in uh, North Carolina. Oh, I don't know. Well, as long as the movie theater doesn't have bed bugs, I'll be coming. I'll be stopping by yeah, there. No, we don't. We don't have bed bugs. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's, I'm in the uh, Arden area. Oh, nice, man. Well, if I'm ever there, I'll be down. I'll be sure to look you up. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye. See you, man.